بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I am Farooq Habib Dr. Farooq Habib from ISRA International Sharia Research Academy for Islamic Finance and uh, I am going to talk about uh, uh, cryptocurrencies and Sharia insights on it so first of all we need to understand that what are cryptocurrencies the the phenomena of cryptocurrency is quite recent and uh, we can see that uh, everybody every conf in every conference every gathering is talking about it they want to know more about it they want to learn things which is uh, which are related to cryptocurrencies and uh, it's not only for ordinary people that uh, the interest has developed among them but i think that uh, it uh, it is a major concern for governments for authorities monetary authorities and financial institutions and uh, other relevant stakeholders and uh, if you look from sharia perspective on cryptocurrencies like sharia needs to sharia first asks that uh, what is it in its nature what is its nature what is exactly the the features and uh, what are the fundamental characteristics of this thing so if you look at cryptocurrencies in a very broad definition and in a very broad concept it's a digital representation of value and uh, cryptocurrencies they use uh, in encryption methods that is why they are called cryptocurrency because uh, these methods are used to secure the transaction and uh, securely transfer the value from one party to another party and uh, if you particularly talk about uh, bitcoin bitcoin is similar to is a is a class of cryptocurrency which is again a digital representation of value some people have uh, defined it as a as a currency system or money system or payment system but uh, i think that it's too early to say that it's a currency or a money because uh, we have certain criteria for currencies <coughs> or uh, money and uh, but from sharia perspective we need to look also that whether the nature of cryptocurrency or bitcoin itself is uh, is it involved in uh, intrinsically impermissible uh, element or not for example is there any element either in distribution or in mining or in uh, issuance or the system itself or the bitcoin itself is uh, uh, is uh, involved in uh, in any kind of uh, uh, impermissible activity intrinsically impermissible activity or not that is the first issue if you look at bitcoin basically it's a digital number is it can be stored and uh, it can be obtained from a system and it can be stored on that system itself or in a, any electronic device which is connected to the internet and uh, you can use it for example like mobile phone or uh, uh, laptops or even at a uh, on any dedicated device designed for storing bitcoin so you can use it and uh, you can use these kind of devices for that but the problem is uh, it does not have any physical appearance but from sharia perspective it doesn't matter that it does not have a physical appearance or not but as long as it has a uh, permissible element uh, fundamental elements it has uh, fundamental uh, fundamental permissible elements and uh, uh, there is uh, because from sharia perspective we have seen that researches have shown that uh, intangible assets are also recognized as an asset class in sharia but uh, the problem is not that uh, that it is intangible or tangible the problem with bitcoin or cryptocurrencies is that they they represent sometimes they represent uh, uh, a specific project or a specific company or a specific uh, commodity so we need to look into the fundamentals of those companies or uh, and we need to see the business nature of business which the cryptocurrencies are representing to to form a sharia opinion on that another issue with the cryptocurrencies is that uh, people are interested in cryptocurrencies due to the speculative factor it is very high it's very highly volatile and because of that people would uh, people want to exploit this uh, nature or factor and due to this factor they are buying it and that's why you can see that the 
value of Bitcoin is uh, going uh, higher and higher every day, every time, every minute. But that is a major concern. Another one, another major concern is about risks. There are so many risks because there is no government backing. There is a very short trackability and uh, there is a very short history of Bitcoin itself. And uh, the system of Bitcoin is uh, is not perfect as well. We can we have seen so many hard forks in the in the system. And uh, if you look at the security perspective, there are so many security uh, loopholes uh, in the exchanges of uh, cryptocurrencies. And uh, we have uh, also seen that uh, transpar transpar transparency is there, but uh, anonymity has uh, given some concerns. Uh, has uh, given some room for the concerns about uh, uh, about using bitcoins and cryptocurrency for illegal activities so that is another concern and uh, we have also seen that uh, because it is decentralized and issued by a non-government unauthorized uh, institution so we have to look from Sharia perspective that whether it is permissible or not as well and uh, so if you look from the hierarchy perspective so sharia has to see that whether it's mal or not if it is mal then is it mal mutaqawwam or ghair mutaqawwam mal means basically a valid asset or not and then uh, mal mutaqawwam means like if you can drive benefit from or not from sharia perspective and then we have to see whether it's a commodity or currency is it of there are so many countries right now which are uh, which have uh, categorize bitcoin in different uh, in different classes for example some countries they are saying that it's a financial asset some countries are saying that it's a property of value some countries are saying that it's only a uh, commodity a good or uh, some countries are uh, uh, hold uh, hold opi uh, the opinion that it's uh, it's a currency so we have the urf is not has not been established yet to to issue uh, uh, or to form an opinion, Sharia opinion on that. That's another issue. And uh, the fourth most important issue is basically uncertainty and gharar. There is so much uncertainty and gharar in, in Bitcoin right now. Maybe by the time uh, this will fade away, but uh, right now it's a major concern. So I think that uh, from Sharia perspective, we have to look from all angles and also we have to look from Maqasidu Sharia perspective and from economic benefits and economic advantages and social advantages and benefits also uh, and uh, because uh, it's not regulated yet and there is no universal and standardized regulations and legal framework for for dealing in cryptocurrencies and how we can use them as a payment system or in any other uh, activity that's a major concern so I think that Sharia has to also look into this one and Sharia scholars are looking into it I have seen so many researches and uh, inshallah in the future there will be more researches on it and uh, I am also working on one research uh, where I am trying to find out the uh, conclusive concrete Sharia ruling on cryptocurrencies so inshallah uh, once it is finished I will be more than happy to share it and uh, other Sharia scholars will be coming up uh, and joining uh, the, uh, this uh, issue and topic and working on it and I think that uh, we will have more comprehensive understanding of the issue. With that I uh, close my uh, uh, this uh, small speech and thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.